This is an excerpt of a recent Power Up webinar exploring how to integrate Apple Motion 5.3 with Apple Final Cut Pro 10. Hi, my name is Larry Jordan. In this excerpt, I'll show you how to create controls in motion that can be published to Final Cut. Inevitably, when we create an effect in motion for use inside Final Cut, we want to tweak it once it's been applied to a specific clip in a specific project. Motion makes it possible to send specific parameter controls to Final Cut along with the effect itself. So let me define four terms, publish, rigging, widget, and snapshot. Publish allows a setting in motion to be adjusted in Final Cut. Rigging is a container for widgets. A widget is a customized master controller which is attached to a rig. There's no limit to the number of parameters a widget can control, and multiple widgets can be attached to the same rig. A snapshot is a preset. This is an important concept. A snapshot is a preset of one or more parameters which are attached to a widget. All widgets require snapshots. Effect controls are not freeform. So here's what you need to understand. When you want to control one or more settings individually, you publish them. When you want to create presets or control multiple parameters from the same control, you use rigging and widgets. Let me show you how this works. Here's one that I use all the time. I use this for the webinars that I create. So let me just illustrate this. Let's go up to Titles. Let's go to Larry. And let's add a note. Okay. These are the notes that I add to all of my training. Notice I've changed the color of the first text. It's in a specific font. And I want to be able to change it. But it also has a gray bar behind it. And when I select that, I go up to my text menu. I can not only have a slider for opacity on the bar, so I can determine how much I want to block the background, but when I click the Y position, I can drag that whole note up and down so I can control the position where that note is so it doesn't block whatever's important. I use this in every webinar to correct a mistake or add a keyboard shortcut or clarify something that I said. So this has been a really, really helpful effect for me to create. So here's how I did it. Let's go back to Motion, New, Title, and I'm going to set the duration to be 10 seconds. Again, hide the timing pane, Shift-Z, and there's our title. I've already shown how to format the text, so I'm going to skip that part just because I don't want to waste time doing the same thing twice. Instead, I want to select the group. With the group selected, I'm going to drag out a rectangle right there. Go to the arrow tool, select it, show the HUD, change the color, I'm going to make it black. So I can see the text, I'm going to drag the rectangle down. There's my text which we've agreed we can format. There's my background and there is the text background. Well, I, I need to be able to move the rectangle and the text without adjusting the title background, so I'm going to add a new group and we're just going to call this control. Could be called anything. I'm going to grab my text and my rectangle and put it in the top group. So now my background is down here. That's my title background. And my text and the rectangle are up here. To adjust the opacity, select my rectangle. There we go. Select the rectangle, go to the inspector, and notice the uh, opacity setting. We'll put that under properties, I think. Yep, right there. Under properties, opacity, right, just uh, mouse click, don't have to control click, just click on the downward pointing arrow and publish it. Whatever I have this set at, I'm going to set it to 75%. Whatever setting I set for a parameter that I'm publishing, when I save that effect, that becomes the default setting when the effect moves into Final Cut. Then I select the group that contains the text and the background, 
And notice the Y position, because they're both contained in the group and the background is not, I can change the vertical position by publishing the Y position. Well, because I want to change just vertical and not horizontal, I'm going to twirl down the position and notice I've got control over the X horizontal, the Y vertical, and Z depth, which we'll talk about next week, the depth position. So again, I'm going to click on the downward pointing arrow, click Publish, and then Save. We'll call this Notes Plus, store it in the Larry category, Publish, go back to Final Cut, and get off that browser, bring it back to the browser, and we have a Notes Plus right there, click it, there's our text. Text is editable, just double click it and we can type it. Select it, go up to the controls in the inspector. There's opacity. And there's our Y position. And I'll apply it again so I can point out notes plus. Note that the opacity is set to the same value that I had inside motion. In both cases, whether I'm publishing a single parameter, the amount of the green tint, or multiple parameters, opacity and Y position, I use the word publish, which is a one-for-one -one relationship between the control that's inside motion and the control that shows up inside Final Cut. This has been an excerpt of a recent Power Up webinar looking at integrating Apple Motion 5.3 with Apple Final Cut Pro 10. For the complete version of this online training, please visit our store at LarryJordan.com slash store and look for Webinar 219. By the way, membership is a great value when you need to stretch your training dollars. A subscription membership to our video training library saves you money. You can access all our videos for a low monthly price of only nineteen ninety nine. That's more than 1,600 movies hundreds of hours, all in-depth and all up-to-date. Plus, members can attend any of our Power Up webinars for free. Our training covers Apple and Adobe software. We update it every week. And for more information, visit LarryJordan.com slash membership. And thanks.